everybody and welcome back to Sash Fabrics. Today's video is not the video I was planning on giving you guys, so you'll have to tune in later after I make sure this is fully fixed and I will have a cuff hack video for you. But today we're going to have a uh, unplanned video which is how to do the timing on a Brother 1034D serger. I kind of searched the interwebs for good videos and I couldn't find a video that was as clear as I wanted, but I did find enough to be able to fix it. So I'm going to walk you guys through to start to finish of fixing it. So first make sure your machine is powered off and unplugged, as you can see my plugs right here. You never want it plugged in when you're working on it, just in case there's an electrical short. I did push my top thread bar down just to get it out of the way, though that's not a big deal. Take your removable thread tray off and set it away and slide your door open. Now to show you what happened to my machine, one of my lovely children was playing with a thing of change. Here we have a penny and they got it lodged right here behind the looper bar. So what happened was I went to use the machine and the looper caught on that and knocked this upper looper out of position. So on my machine, I have not actually t had to change my lower looper position. I've only adjusted my upper looper position. Um, so I'm also going to show you guys how to clean your machines in this video, but first let's start with tension. So to get this panel here, right here off, there will be a screw here and there will be two screws in the back. I have already removed those. And then you kind of got to wiggle it and pull the cover off and we're going to set that to the side. Okay. Now to fix the upper tension, you will need an Allen wrench. So this one, I don't know what size it is. This is bigger than the Allen wrench that comes with the serger to do the needles because here's my needle Allen wrench and that's what you use right there when you change your needles. But we're going to be working over here and it needed a slightly bigger Allen wrench. So this is about one size up. So to redo the timing on your serger, you're going to take your Allen wrench and there's two um, Allen There's two Allen nuts there, there, and there. You're gonna loosen them. When that gets loosened, this whole gizmo is gonna move up and down, up and down. So placement wise, when you redo your, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Okay, I've now zoomed you guys in nice and tight. So you'll see, I'm gonna back it up. Okay, you'll see your two needles here, and then your upper looper is right here. So, to have it set in the right position, you need to have your needles, when they start coming down, you'll see that the hole of the looper is now just past, there's really not a good way to show it, the hole of the looper is now just past the needles, okay? So that, when the hole of the looper is just past the needles, you're in the right position. Tighten down one of these Allen wrenches, or Allen bolts, and then after you get that settled, go ahead and get your... Allen wrench in there and tighten the other one. There you go. That's how you fix the upper looper, looper if the timing gets off. The lower looper, I did not have to fix my lower looper, but I will show you guys how to do that. Okay, everyone, we are now in position to fix our lower looper. Okay, the lower looper is a little more difficult. I'm not undoing mine because mine was not giving me problems. It was just my upper looper that I broke. The lower looper, okay, to adjust it, there is a hex bolt right here on the base of this. It's kind of hiding in here. I can, well, my camera won't focus. Um, it's right there at the base and there's a hex bolt. So you would loosen that and then this would be able to slide forward and backwards as needed. Now the proper adjustment for it, when it is all the way out, right there, is from this intersection right here, like if I was to hold my finger flat, to the tip of this should be 18 millimeters. Again, I did not adjust mine. That is my fa how it is came from the factory. So that is 18 millimeters. Once you get this to 18 millimeters, and once you get it so that your eye hole on your looper is just past your needle, you are good to go. Now to show you guys how to clean it. So I have already cleaned mine. Okay, everyone. Now, since we have the machine open, we're going to go ahead and clean the machine. Um, I've already mostly cleaned mine. My can of air was running low. Now, typically when you clean machines like this, you don't actually want to use canned air, but 
when you take the machine fully apart like I have, it is okay to use canned air. And the motor is back here. So really, if you can push the dust away from the motor by doing stuff like this, like this, get that all clean, you know. Oh, I didn't clean it as well as I thought. You are good to go. So I blow that out really well. Now, this is just this front portion, and this was covered with a lot of dust when I started. We're going to go ahead and turn the machine. Okay. And we're now looking at the side panel of the machine. Okay. This is our arm that comes off so that we can do cuffs. Set that out of the way. I'm not going to take this portion off today because I can get in there with my canned air from the side. So I'm going to leave that portion on the machine. Now this portion here, there's a screw here and there's a screw right around the back. You undo those and it takes a little pull. There you go. It takes a little pull to get off. So there you go. That is now off of the machine. Oh, I missed a whole clumpage in here. Um, if you have tweezers, you can also use tweezers to clean it out and those work quite well there you go so much lint in surgers guys so much lint and so now from this point you can take and get all the little lint out you can come back up here from the from the top from the front and get the lint out and this is the only time I would recommend using the canned air because I have it completely open so I'm able to come in here before I put it together I will blow this kind of air is on its last leg. I will blow the engine compartment out completely to make sure that I didn't lodge any lint in the engine itself. Um, so that's the most important part. So there you go. We have cleaned the machine and we have fixed the timing. And at this point, I'm just going to put everything back on. Um, this cover right here is kind of difficult to get back on. You kind of have to wiggle and push it and I'm not going to video record myself fighting with the machine. But there you go. I have fixed my machine. Hopefully. Uh, I'm going to get her all threaded up and test her out. And good luck to anyone out there fixing your machines. So thank you for visiting Sash Fabrics YouTube video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer though. A lot of times I miss them. Sorry. Make sure you follow us on our Facebook page to get the custom fabrics that I sew with these beautiful machines. Um, and you guys have a great, great day. Bye.